Hello everyone, welcome back to our SAP IBP release highlight videos. We are back here in November with our SAP IBP 2311 release. And again, today we'll take you through some of the most interesting features that we are going to be highlighting today. I'm Robin from Flexo. My name is Sander, also from Flexo. And we are both experts in SAP supply planning solutions. And we are going to guide you today through today's session highlighting some of the features and then ending off with some smaller topics as well. So what we will be discussing today, so we have in total three other topics. So we will take it a little bit different than normally. We only have three topics today, but we will end up with some miscellaneous topics and some smaller improvements um, which come to all types of IBP landscape. So we'll start off with master data health checks. SAP continues on the journey of making mass data more reliable, more accurate. So that's also where this comes into play. Then we are going to take a look at curve-based forecasting, a new app, a new algorithm which has been introduced. We'll then take a look at real-time forecast consumption. We'll shortly explain what forecast consumption is and what benefits this brings to the new uh, IBP landscape. And then, as I said, we will end up with some miscellaneous topics, some smaller changes which have been introduced into the IBP landscape uh, which we have been listing and also uh, give some small explanations on, on those. So let's take it away with the first topic for today, which is the master data health check. So what is it, how it can be used and why should it be used or why can it be used? That's what we will be discussing today. So first of all, what is it? Well, it's again an extension to the, the whole master data validation process in IBP. So if you remember from previous releases we had, the detection of outliers in master data in the past. We also had the opportunity to discover patterns in your master data. So all kinds of master data machine learning algorithms which has been introduced in order to improve your master data quality. So again, also this feature, this highlight is again aimed at improving your master data quality and then in the end leading to subsequent planning accuracy uh, and increased planning accuracy, so better results in the end. So. How can this be used? How can this be can this be introduced into your solution? So first of all, it's all about defining custom checks. So defining customer master data specific checks, where you are going to check for correctness for yeah, violations of specific attributes of specific values. So how do you do it concretely? Well, you can introduce your custom validation criteria. Um, then also you have the option to flexibly enable or disable these checks. I suppose that momentarily you want to disable the checks. You can also do that flexibly in the system. And then finally, you can also add multi-language check messages. So whenever any related action to Masi that happens in the system, there can be a multi-language check message which pops up on your screen telling you that there might be something wrong or that some data might need to be changed. Um, so then rounding up, why can it be used and why is it introduced in this in this new release is, as I said, IVP and SAP is very highly focusing on mass data quality in general, because having this good quality data is essential, as I said in the, in the top point of the slide, because you will have more accurate planning data as well in the end. And because each company's mass data is so unique, so each company, each customer has its own mass data set, it's very essential that a specific customer a specific use case can have its own custom criteria and its own custom checks. So we can freely define these customer specific. We can have customer specific checks, customer specific messages. And of course that will benefit the different customers in their master data journey, let's see. Just as an introduction to the, to the functionality, a, a high level check on how it can be used in the system, what kind of details need to be, need to be predefined in order to be able to use these checks. We prepared some small demo in the system of how it currently looks. So there is a new app available, which is the Manage Mass Data Checks app, where you can freely define and create some of these, some of these custom checks as I've been discussing. So you provide a name and ID for the specific um, rule that you want to create. And basically when you get to the app, you have different things that you can pre-configure. So you define which mass data type you want to be checking and whether it should be an error message or a warning message which is popping up to the screen. So the difference is, is quite clear. So an error will stop 
the execution or the update of the mass data warning will just give you a pop-up message that something might be wrong or something might need to be checked. Then, as I explained previously, you can add these language specific messages. So there is support of uh, lots of languages in the system freely available. So depending on the user settings, so on which user is using the IUP landscape, the specific setting uh, or specific message will pop up depending uh, which language has been selected in the user settings. And then in the end, you also define your conditions, your error detection conditions. You can define which attributes will need to be checked. There are multiple operators available which you can use to do the check. So a larger than which or smaller than, for example, or an equal to if you're using numerical values, or it might just be a contain, for example, if you're using just characters, let's say. And there you can then define against which other attribute it should be checked, or you can also uh, give a fixed value against which it should be checked. So that's how high, very high level you can maintain these checks, how you can set up these checks. And of course, in the end, when doing an update of some kind of mass data related action, uh, these checks will be executed. And depending on the outcome, it might uh, display an error or a warning message as suggested. So I've given a small or brief explanation introduction into the into the topic. Again, SAP has provided a video as well on their YouTube channel with some highlights, with some more examples, um, explaining this attribute in a little bit more detail. Seems like a very nice feature. Indeed. Yeah. It's good master data means good plan results. So indeed, it's continuing on that topic, as I said. And yeah. further improvements that will, will of course also happen in the system and, and in the future. Yeah. So I think not? we will definitely use this one. Indeed. All right. All right, Sandra, let's then take it away for the second one. Yeah, so the second topic is curve-based uh, forecasting. So sometimes we get the question, um, how do I calculate a forecast for a product for which I don't have a lot of sales system? And the answer SAP provides is called a new forecasting algorithm called curve-based forecasting. And it tries to predict sales based on frequent life cycle patterns. So it's an algorithm that uh, works in two steps. The first step um, is the clustering phase. So we're going to have the, a look at sales history, and then we're going to cluster it into specific reference curves. And the result of the clustering phase is then used in the prediction or in the forecasting phase. SAP also provides a, a video uh, with, which is short, but very clear in my opinion. So if you're interested in the topic, definitely go check it out. Um, we'll have a look at an example. So here on the left-hand side, you can see sales history. It's a lot of sales history, it's long, but what we're going to do is cluster this sales history. And you can see we have two, uh, sorry, three clusters. We have the red one, which is more an arc. Then we have the blue one, which has a plateau and then goes back to zero. And then finally we have the green um, curve type. And on the right-hand side, you can see the result of the clustering phase. And we have three reference curves. And these reference curves are then used in the second phase, the prediction phase. Again, on the left hand side, you can see our three reference curves, but you can also see sales history. The orange line is limited sales history for a certain product. And what the algorithm is going to do, it's going to check which of my reference curves most aligns with my sales history. In this case, it's the red curve. And based on very limited sales history, using the reference curve, we can create a nice and realistic forecast. So I think this is definitely useful because I know from experience, this has a use case. And we will definitely be using it um, at one of our clients. Yes. I already have one in mind. So I think it's part of the demand license. For Correct. The it's, yeah, it's, yes. a, it's a more um, advanced, um, forecasting algorithm. So it's not uh, available in as an OP license, but it's a uh, demand uh, related. Yes. All right. Looks very nice. Indeed, as you see on the right, it's, it's providing a very good forecast and let's say based yeah. on that on that reference for a very small period of, of history. So definitely yeah. some some use cases to be found there. Definitely. All right, then I'll take it back for the next topic, which is the real time forecast consumption. So maybe starting off with a little bit small introduction just a, a very high level definition of what is forecast consumption is basically a process 
that we are executing in the system or that can be executed in the system in which you are going to reduce your forecast values by your actual sales order such that we will avoid double counting and you make sure that the sales orders are considered in the correct way such that you have like a nice reliable output that you can then use in your supply chain planning for example so meaning that you take your forecasting values you take into account your uh, sales orders either for a specific product location or for another level that can also be freely mm -hmm. defined of course and in the end you will get a nice and reliable output for your supply planning so that's basically what the forecast consumption is so Previously, forecast consumption uh, had to be executed via a job. So therefore, you also need to, to schedule this job using a certain periodicity, a certain frequency in the system. So that meant that there was no real life or real time update of your, of your situation, of your data. And it also meant that the planners had to wait for the next run, the next iteration of the jobs of the chains, for example, to have this newest information always available. However, now with the 23.11 release of IBP, there is a new function which has been introduced, which is the IBP consumption function, which basically allows us to do this calculation automatically and in real time when a new sales order is coming in into IBP. So meaning that you will always have, or with using this function, you will always have up-to-date information and accurate information, which is always going to reflect the latest status of your of your system of your data, let's say. So this also means that you don't always have your latest information available to use for all kinds of analysis and to also bring into supply when then planning against uh, planning against the demand that has been accurate and update uh, always on the go. I think this is a very nice feature. In fact, we're already implementing it for one of our customers who is using RTI or real-time integration. So real-time is a big plus there. Indeed. It's always also all these kind of improvements always like bring or come together into like the bigger picture of IVP and SAP. And of course, the idea would be to move as more as, as much as possible to that real time integration yeah. to always have that latest information available. And also this one is a is an is a way in improving this and in achieving this. So definitely something which will be yeah. coming more reliable in the future, and more usable in the future as well. So definitely something to consider when going forward, I would say. All right, let's move on to the final topic. It's a bundle of uh, improvements, uh, which we want to highlight. <clears throat> um, so there are some enhancements. And the first enhancement we want to um, tell, about, tell you about is uh, the fact that we can now load planning objects via a file. Previously, we had to do it within the, the Manage Planning Objects app. But now you can do it via a file. And we know this is useful because I at least received the question already if it's possible to do it via a file. So this is definitely an improvement. Um, the next enhancement is uh, regarding the planner workspace. So in general, the planner workspace received some enhancements, two of which we want to highlight are the attribute based totals. You know, this is already available in the Excel UI, but now it's also coming to the planner workspace. And then finally, I, to my great delight, is the fact that the full screen mode is now improved. And previously, there was no way to save your data in full screen mode, no way to simulate it, but now it is. And so you can save, simulate. You can even you have even access to the sidebar. So if you want to add a quick, uh, quickly add a key figure or change your time periods, it's all possible in the full screen mode. So definitely be useful. Um, third, a quality of life improvement. And so in the Manage Master Data app, you can now um, do mass editing for a certain selection, which is just a small quality, uh, quality of life improvement. And then finally, um, SAP provides shortcuts. So there are shortcuts, um, keyboard shortcuts to save data, simulate, simulate data, refresh, reset changes. And they are available in the Excel UI as well as in the planner workspace in the full screen mode. Um, so definitely some improvements that uh, will make your life as an IBP planner more enjoyable. Yeah, indeed. Indeed, that, that, let's say the aim of, of IBP or SAP is uh, further enhancing yeah. or improving that user friendliness of all kinds of different apps. So you have indeed the Excel UI on the one hand, the planner works, which is just becoming way or more and more usable and user friendly, yeah. of course. And all these enhancements to all these kind of different IBP landscape or parts of the IBP landscape will bring ease of mind to, to the customer and to the business users, of course. Yeah. So 
I think that was it. Was what you wanted to discuss today, what we wanted to highlight today. Yes. Of course, if you want to know more about any of these topics that we have been discussing today, or about our SAP supply chain management solutions in general, um, either follow us on LinkedIn, visit our release page, and do not hesitate to get in contact with our experts. We will always be available to answer any questions, to give some kind of information on new topics, on, on the newest releases. And also on that release page, you can visit and you can see what kind of updates we have given in the past. And also for the future releases that will also be bundled on that specific release page. So then the only thing left to do for now is thank you all for watching. Again, we will then make a new appointment in three months. So in the month of February next year, there will be a new IBP upgrade. So then we will be back with another release highlight. So thank you, Sandy, and thank, thank you. you all for watching. And we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.